You don't have to have a trigger because you can have a routine audit, one that would be conducted in the ordinary course of business, and this might be uh, rare, but it's actually good pr practice and procedure. And um, while it might be less frequent to do a routine audit on a, a, a typical reinsurance contract that's running well, I can assure you this at least, when it comes to audits of MGAs, it's probably not just a, uh, a good practice, it's probably an essential practice if somebody's involved and a lot of the business is coming through a managing general agent to, uh, to, to have a routine audit going on because the further they are removed from the parties in the transaction, the more likelihood there is of a problem. And then of course the next, sub, the next area is the, the typical one that we see uh, where um, you're no longer in the routine relationship, things have turned a little bit hostile, and you'll have the, uh, the occasion to have a audit re required because of a dispute. And in a few minutes, uh, John's gonna talk to you about access to records clauses and what, what you need to be into that, but uh, it could range anywhere from a typical breach of representations, it could be over, uh, and, and that could be over anything in the contract. Representations could relate to the underwriting, could relate to the, you know, the expected uh, losses. It could relate to, uh, just actually, it could relate to whether the the actual accounting between the parties seems to be accurate or not, notwithstanding what the information underlying that is, the data. So, in in a dispute concept, you could have uh, various reasons for for wanting to, to go in and audit, but generally it's for the parties to see if they can get to the same common ground to start the process of coming to a settlement. The, the, another area that uh, you know generally will require audits, and it's very critical to do it, is really transaction related. Those would be a little less common, but they're just as important. And I guess the examples that we throw out here could be where you're moving a book of business from one party to another, or you're settling a book of business with one party, between a party. But very important, and not always look this way, is when a due diligence is done in an acquisition, whether somebody is going to go in, whether it's the company or people that the company are gonna bring in, and actually go out and look at um, the reinsurance parts, which includes not just whether the reinsurance coverages are, are good, whether they're consistent with the acquiring company has, but also whether there are any surprises, including those that relate to reinsurance recoverables and other balances and everything. So I think it's an essential, when, when somebody's looking at due diligence of an insurance carrier and going in, if that's what we're, we're gonna be doing, if it's an acquisition, if you're leaving, if they're leaving out the reinsurance part of it, not spending enough time on it, they're leaving out a major in liabilities and potential assets, and I think that's self-fulfilling. The other kinds of audits you might see are what I call annual, these could be annual audits or otherwise accounting audits, and they're related to, you might have ones that are in connection with the routine financial statement examination, and that would be uh, conducted sometimes by the uh, an outside auditing firm as part of what they do. They'll go in and, and uh, look at the reinsurance area on a, a, a sampling basis, and it could be for compliance. Now, fortunately for all of us in this room, while it's not a dead issue, the, you know, the FASB 113 issues have now become less, uh, uh, let me see, less in the, in, the, in the public eye or profile of the last, a couple of the cases are getting settled. But there was a time period there where, and a time period that it was fairly intense, and also by show of hand, I don't know if anybody, anybody in this room either participated or subject to an audit that was either driven by an internal committee or the SEC with respect to uh, finite risk or finite risk insurance. Anybody by hand? All right, so it's probably less frequent, but interesting to know. Um, we, and I was involved in a number of them, and they all had interesting ramifications.